you're talking about personalized learning and you're talking about communication and collaboration, this is the way to do it. I'm really impressed with this event. I think it's a great opportunity for me as a student to hear firsthand what's going on in our district and other districts as well. Our journey is one of, I think, fundamentally talking about how can we communicate learning in a different way to parents and yet empower teachers with the tools they need to support. So one of the things we decided to do was to uh, talk about the teacher of the future and the competencies they need and how we go about transforming the system to create that. I'm trying to encourage our, our teachers to try and find new ways to engage our kids and get them more excited about their learning so our actual entire school plan and goals are built around um, student engagement. So that involves trying to encourage them to use technology, um, trying to encourage them to do different things as opposed to standing in front of the class and, and teaching content, but actually getting them to put the, the learning in the hands of the kids. With the, the grade 12 doing grad trans stuff, right, they can link this to their grad trans presentation so they can have you know, some evidence for that as well. We've been doing 3D printers for about four or five years now, and it's great because kids can actually take their product home with them. Where teachers are becoming more facilitators. Before it was like teachers were expected to know everything and anything, right? And so now, sometimes I tell the kids, I don't know, you know, take out your phone, so let's find out right now. And that's okay. What we're trying to do here is really bridge that gap between what kids are getting at a high school level and what's out there in industry. I'll be uh, going into the movie industry and or the game industry as an environmental artist or a digital sculptor. My school is heavily oriented towards the trades and helping to get students ready starting in about grade 10. There has to be a breaking down of silos and, and really the schools need to be more comfortable going out into the community and asking for support and the community needs to be more comfortable inviting representatives from the school district to come and share their issues, ideas, what's new, what's happening so we get a bit more cross-pollination. We already have a youth academy with our fire department. The idea is new today to maybe look at the curriculum and change it so they're also getting some of their first year credit in fire services. We are going to start a mobile welding program at Hope Secondary in August and we are thrilled with this. We're a small district, the smallest one here, but this will provide a wonderful learning opportunity for our students and future jobs. There are pockets of brilliance everywhere, particularly in British Columbia, of really great things happening in a personalized education standpoint. And the communication, the collaboration, we're just talking about all the soft skill development um, now that is required of students. Learning skills that they need for the future, uh, research and presentation skills. They're working in groups most of the time, so they're doing lots of collaboration, learning how to work in teams, that kind of stuff. I think today has been a, a deep day of powerful thinking. Uh, with a multiplicity of perspectives that have been brought to the tables for conversation. Very exciting. I hope it isn't just a conversation, but that it's a reality and that we do move into, again, some more seamless work between community, businesses, the school districts, because we have to be partners. The kids have to be seeing how we work together um, and why it's important to do what they're doing in school, how it transitions into community work or into, into their business life after school. I mean, you talk about the whole idea of, of choice in education and when you want to let these kids choose what they want to do. So many of these kids, they know this is what they want to do. And the, the, the traditional jobs such as teacher, lawyer, doctor, of course will always be there, but there's this whole industry just bursting. I heard that this morning at the school I was at. I heard it today throughout the sessions from the students. And it is amazing to me how clearly they see what it is they want to do. Innovation in the classroom will not be achieved overnight. It will take practice and patience and passion. Teachers will have to learn just like students will. And it will be in this environment of cooperation that new ideas and new ways of learning will be found.